Hello beautiful artistic souls and welcome to Monet Cafe. This video is perhaps going to be a little different than some of my other ones. I basically just enjoyed the process of painting today. I just put the camera on while I painted and I wasn't focused on making a tutorial and it was just a beautiful experience. And uh, I'm not going to do a lot of voiceover for this one, but I wanted to make some comments. Um, I'm using the same technique here that I used in the video that I just posted. And it's a technique where I actually use oil paint and walnut oil uh, to do an underpainting. Those are the oil paints you see to the left there. And if you go back and look at the video prior to this one, you can see actually how I used them, what the product was, and more details. Um, but I wanted to make mention that I got some really good comments on that video. One was from a woman who was, um, I think it was a woman, um, that was more experienced with oil painting and she made some great observations that, you know, you want to make sure that your art, when you create it, unless you're just practicing, uh, that w it will be archival, which means it's going to last for the duration. Um, it's not going to be something you're going to have any problem with or yellowing or issues with. And um, she was familiar that with oil paint, you often don't want to put anything with an acrylic uh, medium over it uh, or a water-based medium on top of it and um, my technique was to add the clear gesso on top of the um, oil paint that I use now because my um, oil uh, painting it's it's really more of a thin wash but it does have the walnut oil in it um, I'm not sure how many issues I'll have with that but uh, I do have a, um, a fix for that and I think in the future when I do this technique I will probably use acrylic painting as an underpainting if I'm going to put gesso on top of it. Um, now I do think I can still do this technique with the oil painting if I, if they suggested this um, person who was experienced in oil painting, is putting the gesso down first um, I don't know why um, doing the oil on top of the gesso is any different, but um, because I'm not that experienced with the oil painting, but putting the gesso down first and then, then doing an oil wash, I'm calling it an oil wash because I'm pretty heavy with the walnut oil on this, um, may uh, be a fix for that. But I really don't think I'm going to have any any problems with this and again I was just enjoying it and having fun but I want to give you guys good information I don't want you to create something that you're hoping will last and it won't um, another question was uh, was this paper that I'm using coated with any gesso or anything and it was not and it's because it is that um, paper from the Arteza product again look at the last video where it's an acrylic it's called an acrylic pad but it's suitable for oil or acrylic and I noticed each time I've done this that if you look up this paper is, is um, nice it's got a nice thickness and it's like it's already coated with something it's got a little texture to it and when I'm done painting there's no stain through on the back it's perfectly white and I love how it stays very flat when you're working on it so I, I do love the surface so I'll be making more videos with a little work around with some of these things but for now I'm using the remainder of the oil paint that I had and just so you know I used this almost two hours after I put up those little oil um, uh, samples uh, from my previous video and it was still um, pliable enough for me to add the olive oil, olive oil <laughs> the walnut oil and uh, and, and make this underpainting. I was adding these things right here. I was going to add some flowers to this, but as I got to painting, I decided not to. I end up just making it a field. So I'm just going to let you guys enjoy this um, process. I was, I had a reference photo, but I veered away from it so much. I was kind of working from my imagination that um, I didn't include it again. So this is not much of a tutorial. It's more of an experience. So from here forward, enjoy the music and the painting and I called this um, painting I titled it when fear subsides somebody made a comment was that meaning that it was good news about my mom and her cancer and actually there is good news so far that she's doing great she's feeling great after her radiation but she won't have her final scan for a while but I'm praising the Lord anyway that she's just doing so great and there's a really high success um, percentage for 
uh, her process and procedure and the type of cancer that she had. So again, thank you guys for all your prayers. But I just called it When Fear Subsides because while I was painting, I don't know why, I kept thinking of Psalm, Psalm 23, is it? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And just what a beautiful thing it is to have faith in the Lord. And um, so while I paint here, enjoy and I am going to read some verses just for a little bit and I thank you guys that um, I don't get many objections to my faith and I know a lot of you guys totally know where I'm coming from I'm so thankful for each and every one of you all right guys enjoy this process I loved creating this painting it was just like a moment a beautiful moment all right guys happy painting I am reading now from the book of Philippians in the New Testament, and this is chapter 2, verses 3 through 17. And in this book, it is the Apostle Paul, who was once a non-believer in Jesus Christ and actually persecuting Christians, but his life was changed forever, and he became truly the greatest apostle, writing the majority of the New Testament after his conversion upon seeing the resurrected Jesus uh, after all of the other disciples had seen him. He was not an original disciple. So he is a warrior for the Lord. I can't wait to meet him in heaven one day. So enjoy this reading from Philippians chapter 2 verses 3 through 17. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than themselves look not every man to his own things but every man also on the things of others let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus who being in the form of god thought it not robbery to be equaled with god but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ, Yeshua in the Hebrew, is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. from the book of Matthew. It's the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 8. And these, the first four books of the New Testament are called the Gospels, which means good news. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And in this particular chapter of Matthew 8, this is actually Jesus uh, coming in contact with a centurion of Rome. And this was not um, one of the children of Israel or a Pharisee or a Sadducee, all of the religious leaders, um, you know, from the Old Testament that supposedly had the law and had the truth about God. This was someone who would have been considered an outsider when it comes to uh, the religious people of that day and that time period. But Jesus turned everything upside down with his philosophies and his love for everyone. And I think this is a beautiful example for many people today that it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you've come from, it doesn't matter your race, where you're from in the world, and it doesn't even matter what sin you may have or have had in your life. I love the fact, or a little uh, 
neat little expression that says, uh, thank goodness that Jesus catches us first and then he cleans us. So you don't have to clean up your life to come to Jesus. You just have to want him and to have faith and be willing to repent of sin in your life. So here is a reading from Matthew chapter 8. And when Jesus was entering into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, this is a Roman soldier, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, palsy grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but just speak the word only, and I know my servant will be healed. For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goes, and to another one, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard this, he marveled, and he said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not even in Israel. And I say to you, that many shall come from the east and the west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, this is Jesus speaking, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now Jesus is speaking of many of the people who are, quote, religious, end quote, that uh, claim to believe but do not. And Jesus said to this centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed the very same hour. And now I will be reading from the book of John, the Gospel of John in the New Testament. It's the last of the four Gospels. And John was a disciple whom Jesus loved. And there's something very special about the Gospel of John, written perhaps in his own hand, of course in his own hand, but inspired indeed by the Holy Spirit. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Hmm, who is this Word? All things were made by Him, the Word, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, not John the author of this book, but John the Baptist. This same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him, this light, might believe. He, John the Baptist, was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That, Jesus, was the true light which lights every man that comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and yet the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as did receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God and daughters of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, 
the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth.